Quick disclaimer, information in this podcast is for general informational purposes only and is not intended to be treated as medical advice. Always consult with your healthcare team before making changes to your diet, lifestyle, supplementation, or medication. According to the latest global headlines, a Lancet study has revealed that red meat consumption can cause diabetes. Demonization of red meat is a nothing new, so is there any truth in these new headlines or is it just more propaganda? Let's look closer at the facts. Welcome to Type 2 Diabetes Talk, the place where we chat about what really works to treat type 2 diabetes and prediabetes naturally with nutrition and lifestyle. If you're looking to optimize blood sugar and A1C, lose weight, reduce medications, and improve your overall health, this is the place to be. Now, here's your host, type 2 diabetes nutrition specialist, Dr. Jedda. Hello, wonderful people. Dr. Jedda here, and welcome to episode 45, where we're going to be drilling down into some crazy headlines regarding red meat. I get daily notifications in my email inbox with new research on pre and T2 diabetes and also the sensational headlines that follow, with this latest one hitting the globe around red meat causing diabetes. The inbox was full for days over the ordeal. Headlines across the globe have claimed that scientists reveal grim results of eating two slices of ham per day. Just two slices of ham a day could raise your risk of developing type 2 diabetes. Meat consumption significantly raises type 2 diabetes risk. Red and processed meat consumption associated with higher type 2 diabetes risk, study of 2 million people finds. Lancet study reveals red meat consumption can cause diabetes. These headlines have emerged from a paper published in the Lancet Diabetes and Endocrinology titled Meat Consumption and Incident Type 2 Diabetes, an Individual Participant Federated Meta-Analysis of 1.97 million adults with 100,000 incident cases from 31 cohorts in 20 countries. Yes, that's a long title and we mentioned the Lancet recently with the Soups and Shakes Diet for diabetes remission, which we covered in episode 39. The Lancet is considered a prestigious journal, so publications there do often get a lot of media attention. This type of media hype around red meat is certainly nothing new. In fact, the last time this exact same thing happened was in October 2023, with a paper published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition. So that's Not even a year ago. And that was titled Red Meat Intake and Risk of Type 2 Diabetes in a Prospective Cohort Study of United States Females and Males. These accusations of meat being the cause of diabetes have actually been going on for over a decade. So, is there really any truth to it? Pre and T2 diabetes are both conditions where the body has lost the ability to process glucose effectively, leading to higher the normal blood glucose levels. Meat contains no glucose. It is sugar and carbohydrate free. Therefore, if you are to consider that, you might start scratching your head thinking, well, that makes no sense. How can red meat cause diabetes? The answer is it can't. Red meat does not cause diabetes. That's just nonsense. So let's look at some of the facts. One of the key differences with this new study is it used a lot of data, pulling data from 31 population studies coming out of 20 different countries with 1.97 million people. The authors have tried to claim this as a strength of the study, but it's actually a major limitation and flaw, and here's why. What we often see in these population studies is they don't separate processed meat from unprocessed meat. They get people in population studies to do food frequency questionnaires. That's the most common way they collect the data. And this method records the frequency of food and drinks over a period of time. One of the major flaws with this type of data collection method is the questionnaires are made up of pre-specified food lists. That's right. 
people can only enter or choose responses to such a questionnaire by indicating their frequency of foods and drinks based on a pre-specified food list. For example, how often did you eat the following over the past 12 months? Then they present people with pre-specified categories to choose from as well, for example, once per week, once per day, six times per day, etc. For starters, you can imagine that thinking about how frequently you've eaten food over 12 months is a difficult question to answer accurately, right? And getting an accurate picture of a person's true intake from these types of questionnaires, it just isn't possible. But more problematic is that these pre-specified food lists is that we often see the definitions for the foods used in these population studies aren't exactly accurate. For example, you'd have to agree that eating beef, pork or lamb as a sandwich or a mixed dish like lasagna or casserole is not the same as purely eating unprocessed meat, right? Or that eating processed meat sandwiches is not the same as just eating the processed meat. Yet in these food frequency questionnaires used in population studies, that's often what happens. Unprocessed red meats get categorised with meat sandwiches or dishes, so essentially we're not looking at unprocessed red meat, which we know contains no glucose, sugar or carbs, but we could actually be looking at a lot of carbohydrates. Beef or pork sandwiches or burgers, not just the patties but the bread and the buns, or beef lasagna, or beef bolognese with spaghetti, for example. This new paper out of The Lancet didn't define unprocessed meat and processed meat because they were relying on the original definitions provided across the 31 papers they examined, many of which had the problems we just outlined. Interestingly, the majority of the studies included in this paper from The Lancet had not previously published results that demonstrated any association between meat consumption and type 2 diabetes, because they didn't find any. The authors have tried to claim the strength of the study was its size, looking at that 1.9 million adults across 20 countries, but unfortunately, pooling all the bad data only amplifies the issues and flaws. Population studies can only suggest associations, not causation. In fact, they don't prove anything, especially when the associations are tiny, as was the case with this paper. The associations reported were that you'd have a 10% increased risk of getting diabetes by eating unprocessed meats and 15% for processed meats. These are quite small percentages, but there's more to the story because When we look at the absolute risk a person might have with this data, it would basically mean you'd have around a 0.57% risk of getting type 2 diabetes in any one year over a 10-year period. That's right, not even a 1% increased risk of getting type 2 diabetes. The absolute risk in these studies is usually tiny and nothing to be concerned about at all. Yet the way numbers get propagated across the media is clearly outrageous. Are you ready to take charge of your diabetes health? Dr. Jetta's T2 diet program has been clinically proven in a randomized controlled trial to dramatically reduce A1C, weight, and medications in just 16 weeks. The T2 diet program will guide you step by step to discover an eating plan that feels natural and sustainable for you, and most importantly, works to get results. Learn more and join the program today at type2diabetestalk.com forward slash programs. What about these sensational headlines regarding eating two slices of ham per day? It appears that journalists have picked this up from the press release where they stated, and I quote, the researchers found that the habitual consumption of 50 grams of processed meat a day, equivalent to two slices of ham, is associated with a 15% higher risk of developing type 2 diabetes in the next 10 years. The reality is, however, very few people included in the study even ate 50 grams or more of processed meat per day. So how can that claim even be made? Well, it turns out this recent paper had many other discrepancies, 
including the fact that they increased the level of meat consumed by participants and estimated the risk from that. For instance, the average meat consumption may have been 25 to 30 grams per day, but instead the researchers estimated the risk of consuming 100 grams a day of meat. That's strange and certainly not good research. One other thing we didn't see across all the headlines and hype was that poultry consumption was also associated with an increased risk of diabetes, an 8% increased risk. So poultry was 8% and unprocessed red meat was 10%. That's not much difference, right? But there was no mention of poultry being so incredibly bad, which just gives you even more insight to the foolishness of it all. The authors also stated in the top of their discussion, I quote, When replacing processed meat consumption, both unprocessed red meat and poultry consumption were associated with a lower risk of developing type 2 diabetes in modelled food substitution analyses. So basically, they are saying that eating unprocessed red meat and poultry is not associated with diabetes at all. Hmm, yep, just another confusing aspect of the study. The conclusion of the paper also states, I quote, the current findings support the notion that lowering the consumption of unprocessed red meat and processed meat could benefit public health by reducing the incidence of type 2 diabetes. Uncertainty remains regarding the positive association between poultry consumption and the incidence of type 2 diabetes, and this association should be further investigated. So why is the conclusion so certain for unprocessed red meat with a supposed 10% risk, but the conclusion is uncertain for poultry with a supposed 8% risk. That conclusion makes absolutely no sense either. Despite drawing the bold yet disproportionate conclusions, the paper itself states that among randomised control trials, there have been no definitive effects reported that link meat with type 2 diabetes. Of course, because there aren't any. There has been no mechanism investigated that has linked meat with type 2 diabetes, period. The message is clear. The researchers had an agenda to demonise red meat once again. Inevitably, in all these red meat studies, they blame the saturated fat for being the plausible mechanism that's causing diabetes, which was, of course, the case again in this Lancet study. When we think about this logically, This just doesn't make sense. And this is where red meat is grossly misunderstood because it is not high in saturated fat. The main fat found in red meat is monounsaturated fat, which, as we all know, is the heart healthy fat. For a 3.5 ounce, 100 gram portion of beef sirloin steak untrimmed, it contains 7.08 grams of monounsaturated fat and only. 5.51 grams of saturated fat. That's 1.57 gram more monounsaturated heart healthy fat per serving. So red meat is not filled with saturated fat. Chicken contains 4.3 grams of monounsaturated fat and 2.69 grams of saturated fat. Yes, there is less saturated fat in chicken than red meat, but in terms of ratio of fat, there isn't any difference. Red meat contains 1.57 grams more monounsaturated fat per serving, as we just established, and chicken, 1.61 grams more monounsaturated fat per serving. That's only a 0.04 gram difference. So you see, red meat is not much different to other meats in terms of its fat-related nutrition. That is just a misconception, and red meat is, as I said, grossly misunderstood. All of the meats contain a higher quantity of monounsaturated fat, followed by saturated fat and polyunsaturated fat. All meats contain all three types of fats, and that's a fact most people don't realise is that all foods that contain fat contain all three fats, saturated, monounsaturated and polyunsaturated. There are no exceptions to that rule. I'll leave a detailed nutrition facts chart on the website so you can go and take a closer look 
at some meat nutrition facts, as it really will open your eyes about the reality and the misconceptions. Before moving on, let's take a short break and hear a testimonial from one of our members. Joanne said, You have been so much help to me this past year. My A1C started out around 9.5. It has been at 5.4 for the past six months. I have lost close to 50 pounds. Thanks for all your help. Olive oil is considered one of the healthiest fats, and it also contains saturated fat. In fact, per 3.5 ounce or 100 gram portion, it contains about three times as much saturated fat as red meat. Remember the 3.5 ounce or 100 gram portion of beef sirloin steak contained 5.51 grams of saturated fat. Olive oil for the same size portion, 15.4 grams of saturated fat. Why would natural foods contain all three types of fats if saturated fat was bad for us? That just doesn't make sense logically, does it? With olive oil containing saturated fat and being one of the healthiest fats for us, according to ample research, then it doesn't make sense that saturated fat is bad for us. Does it? Blaming the saturated fat in red meat as being the cause of diabetes also doesn't make sense when we consider the research on dairy products, for example. Similar to red meat and eggs, full fat dairy products were once demonised. Overall, what the research now overwhelmingly shows us is that full fat dairy products lower the risk of developing type 2 diabetes and are neutral in terms of cardiovascular disease. If dairy products contain huge amounts of saturated fat compared to red meat, at least four times the amount per serve, then it doesn't make sense that the saturated fat in dairy is protective and beneficial for our health, while the saturated fat in natural red meat is bad. That is just a ridiculous notion. To emphasise again, among randomised control trials, there have been no definitive effects reported that link meat with type 2 diabetes. There has been no mechanism investigated that has linked meat with type 2 diabetes. Red meat does not cause diabetes, period. The biggest risk factors linked to developing type 2 diabetes are being over 40, having family members with type 2 diabetes, or having a higher body weight, especially around the midsection. In these large population studies, it is more likely that people are at risk of diabetes due to other factors which are not taken into consideration. Meat intake is usually not the only difference with the participants. For instance, the highest meat consumers in the studies who also happen to eat sandwiches, burger buns and lasagna as meat also tend to have higher BMIs, are less physically active, more likely to be smokers, have a much higher calorie intake and so forth. And those are all risk factors for developing diabetes. We know it's the sum of a person's overall lifestyle and diet that really matters in terms of health and risk of developing type 2 diabetes. To sum everything up, in this episode, we've critically examined the sensational headlines claiming that red meat consumption causes diabetes. While these headlines have been making waves, it's important to understand the limitations and flaws in the research behind them. Methods to collect food intake data in population studies are unreliable. The study failed to differentiate between unprocessed and processed meats effectively, often grouping them with foods that contain high amounts of carbohydrates such as sandwiches and lasagna. This conflation makes it difficult to isolate the effects of red meat itself. The small reported risk increases are based on associations, not causation. And when looking at the absolute risk, these percentages translate to an almost non-existent increase in diabetes risk far from the alarming headlines suggested. The study also inflated risk estimates by extrapolating data from participants who consumed much less meat than the exaggerated amounts reported in the study's conclusions. 
And there is no evidence from randomised control trials linking red meat consumption directly to the development of type 2 diabetes. The idea that red meat causes diabetes is simply not supported by the current body of evidence. The key takeaway then is that red meat, when consumed as part of a balanced nutrition plan, does not need to be feared as a cause of diabetes. Keep in mind that food companies make billions and billions of dollars from processed foods, so it's beneficial for them to make us believe that it's healthier to eat processed margarine or fake plant-based meat products than it is to eat red meat or butter. They make a lot more money from margarine and fake meat. Research studies and institutions can be funded by food companies and often are. Researchers can have conflicts of interest they don't report, even though they should. There are many factors that drive the propaganda, but logically and sensibly, we should all recognise that it's ultra-processed foods containing sugar and refined carbs that is causing diabetes and all the other health problems. We certainly can't be pointing the finger or the blame to natural, nutrient-dense foods like red meat. As we frequently say here on Type 2 Diabetes Talk, don't believe everything you read on the Wild West Web. Keep your wits about you, as there will always be clickbait, sensational headlines, but as for the truths, well, there's usually a lot more to the story. That's all from me until next week. Dr Jetta, over and out. Thanks for tuning in to Type 2 Diabetes Talk. Please subscribe to the show on your favorite podcast platform. And for episode replays, episode notes, and more, visit type2diabetestalk.com. New episodes are available Tuesdays, 10 a.m. U.S. Eastern Time, or your time zone equivalent. Thanks again. We're truly grateful to be a part of your life and help make a real difference.